It's been three weeks of bloodbath in what seems a coordinated attack on communities in neighboring Makodi, Guma, and Goa West local government area of Benue State, where armed headsmen mindlessly barred their fangs on helpless farmers leaving close to 70 people dead and more than double that figure injured. The Marada also raided houses, food bands, and farmlands in some of the besieged communities living in their wake trails of devastation that may take the communities several years to recover. Perhaps the period under review may best be described as one of the worst in the history of the state in the gory slaughter of defenseless farmers and their family members by the bloodthirsty murderers aside the 2018 New Year Day coordinated massacre in Logo and Guma local government areas that claimed close to 80 lives, sparking widespread outrage both locally and internationally. The timeline of these attacks clearly indicated that the state has been recording an average of four deaths in attacks unleashed on farmers community by the armed head headers who have suddenly turned Benue communities into theater of blood, sorrow and tears. Available record of these attacks indicated that on April 14, 2021, the armed headers invaded Go community, a suburb of Naka, headquarters of Goa West local government area and murdered about eight persons. Go community is less than three kilometers from Naka town. Next on the line was Makodi local government area, where a family of four and three others, including children, were gruesomely murdered at Mbamodu community, Makodi Modern Market Council Ward on April 17. And on April 21, a traditional ruler and five others were also killed in three separate attacks on Tis Zola village, Agon Makodi local government area, Udugbeho in Agatu local government area, and Mbaya Yandev in Guma local government area. In fact, Governor Autumn ran into the victims of Tis Zola attack while returning back to Makodi after an official engagement and had to personally intervene to ensure that the areas were not thrown into a tumor following the murder of the traditional ruler. The governor was also compelled to cancel most of the events organized in his honor by individuals and groups to mark his 60th birthday anniversary in show of solidarity and concern for families who lost loved ones in spate of attacks. And less than 48 hours after came the coordinated invention of Tez Uko, Tez Uborigo and Tez Uhembe communities all in Mbaya, Yandev, Council Ward of Guma local government area on April 23rd which claimed 17 lives and left scores injured. Following that attack, Governor Autumn had to visit Guma and test Wapam IDP's camp, where he raised the alarm that the attacks on Benue communities by the murderer were taking their toll on the people and creating a huge humanitarian crisis for his government. He appealed to spirited individuals, foreign and local organizations to come to the aid of the state. And while the governor was still lamenting the fate of the hapless Benue populace, came the murder of all attacks on April 27th, which jolted the entire state and sparked outrage both between within Pardon and outside the country. The Abagena IDP's camp, located in the outskirts of Makodi town, came under the ferocious attack 
of the headsmen, which left seven of the inmates dead and several others badly injured. It again took a swift intervention of the government, the governor, pardon, who though broke down after seeing the corpses of the murdered IDPs prevailed on the thousands of youth who had mobilized to the scene to bury their thoughts and embark on reprisal attack after they had taken over the very busy Makodi Lafia Road where they laid the corpses of the butchered IDPs chanting war songs. The angry youth yielded to the appeal of the governor but made demand on President Muhammadu Buhari. The youth, through their leader Amos Amor, dropped a hint of what laid ahead in the days and weeks to come if federal government failed to act fast to calm fried nerves and reassure the people of the state of its commitment to put an end to the earthmen manis. Amo called on President Buhari to ensure justice by following and allowing Tiffy youth bear AK-47 Rafael to defend themselves like the headsmen who are allowed to move around the country within and with their weapon unhindered. Hear him, Mr. President, we want justice and justice must prevail. We want you to allow us use AK-47 rifles to defend ourselves the same way the Fulanis are using it. Yesterday we saw them with our eyes and heard them speaking Fulani. They killed some people and injured some others. Some are in the hospital right now. Mr. President, if you know you are in power, if you know you are the president of this country and we voted for you, you must rise up and do something. Else, we will do our best. We must do our best, he exclaimed. Despite the outrage that greeted the Abagena invasion, the murderer again struck the Odei branch and Umbabai Council Ward of Guma local government area, same April 27th, killing a man and his wife. We have had so many series of attacks that have been happening in Nigeria. So many series of attacks has occurred and people are really, you know, reacting to the challenges so far. Part of the resolution of the meeting read by Governor Autumn stated that Benue state government should fully enforce the law to provide for the establishment of community volunteers guard that is the vigilantes and for the purpose connected there with which were you know enacted in the year 2000 the state government has been mandated to support the vigilante with logistics and provide as provided pardon in the law recruitment of the vigilante should be carried out in the 23 local government area of Benue State, he said, the meeting also resolved to arm members of the Guard with legally recognized weapons for the defense of themselves and their various communities in order to put a heart on the armed headsmen induced killing in the state. What do you have to say about what you have had? What do you think about this old news? We would like you to share your own thoughts. We would like to know your candid opinion about what has been said so far. Don't forget that after shedding so much blood, losting so many people, farmlands, the Benue youth, you know, have resolved to fight back. What do you think about this? Do you think it is good for them to revenge? Do you think it is a good option for them to fight back? We would like you to share your thoughts on this. Thank you guys for listening. Do subscribe to this channel if you have not. And I'll see you.